Congratulations. That's such an ordinary word for your extraordinary accomplishment. Congratulations. I'd say it a thousand times to each and every one of you and give you a congratulatory hug if I could. It's impossible for me to know what you've been through because this past year has tried each of us in deeply personal and profound ways. We've had our patience stretched to its limits. Our tenacity has been stress tested. And good humor may well have been the only thing that kept many of us going. For some of you, I am sure that you've had incredible family pressures. Perhaps you've endured losses that you didn't think it was possible to bear, and yet you've kept moving forward. Money has been tight, perhaps, or even non-existent, and you've had to get through this, relying on prayer and promissory notes. I am in awe of all of you because you've reached this personal milestone at a time when the very foundation of this country has been shaken. We've all had to balance personal liberties with public health, faith in the system while also wrestling with systemic racism. We have fought to uphold our democratic ideals in the midst of an assault on the very essence of democracy. And yet you are the generation that has thrived. You are the center that held together. And as you leave this great institution and all the pressures to study and write and produce and succeed, I want you to take a little time to be selfish. That's right, selfish. I know you're supposed to give back and pull others through the doors that have been opened for you and bring about world peace. And I am certain that you will get to all those things. But first, please go out into the world and be boldly, indulgently selfish. Tend to your mental health because we will need you to be steady and clear-eyed. Take some time to catch your breath, to rest, to revel in the pleasure of daydreaming or in the quiet of doing nothing at all. Because we will need you to be strong and tireless as we pick our way through the rocky terrain ahead. Pursue the thing that brings you joy. In my senior year of college, I was planning to go to law school. And God bless the aspiring lawyers. I, I love you all. We need you. But my mother asked me why I was going to law school. And I didn't have a clear answer, other than it seemed like the next step on the ladder of accomplishment. It was the thing to do. Then she reminded me of how much I loved writing. She suggested that I go to graduate school for English or journalism, and I did. And that's why I came to Ann Arbor and to Michigan. And I don't regret it for a moment. I love what I do. So find your joy, because we need more people in this world who have done just that. We need people who are content within themselves so that they can give space to others to find joy too. We need people who are sated with happiness so that they don't feel the need to gnaw away at the happiness of others. Be your full individual self without reservation. Be a flower in full bloom, one that helps to pollinate a glorious garden. Find your voice and sing with passion. Sing in harmony with those around you, but remember that improvisation is the beauty and power of jazz, and that's a uniquely American art form. When it becomes possible, indulge your wanderlust and travel. Go and see this world. Talk to people who look, who look nothing like you, but more importantly, listen to them. Of course, it would be wonderful to travel far afield, but if you're a creature of a densely packed city on the East Coast who has never been to the rural South 
or the cul-de-sacs of the Midwest, go there without judgment. If you're a small town person, spend time in this country's big cities, not at the tourist attractions, but in the neighborhoods where the teachers and waitresses and everyday folks live. We're all real. We're all real Americans. Be the only white person in a black church and extend your hand in friendship. Visit an Islamic center or a synagogue. Talk to an atheist. Be an explorer in your own country and learn the languages of its different regions and religions and subcultures and generations because we need more people who are multilingual. We need people who can not only speak for themselves, but who also understand what others are trying to say. And then in exchange for that period of selfishness, I only ask that you do this one thing, give as many people as you can the gift of grace. After all that you've been through, you're uniquely equipped to understand how desperately people need it, how easy it is to make a mistake and how much people need just a moment to recover from it and to make things right. You understand the impossibility of perfection, what it means to try, what it means to have a bad day or just to miss the people that you love. Be sympathetic to human flaws and failures and inadequacies. Be supportive of the good faith efforts. Be someone who can not only give an apology, but also accept one. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't hold people to account. You absolutely should, you have to. And I don't think that everyone should get a trophy for just showing up. But don't send people home, don't banish them just because they don't make the winner's circle the first time, the second time, or even the third time. Let people know there's valor in trying. Give people a little grace, please. Doing so may not in itself change the world, but grace may well give us all the strength and stamina to keep trying until we do. And so once again, to you amazing, extraordinary, wonderful people, congratulations.